Hi, everyone. Welcome to Zen and Tech, our weekly podcast focused on centering your inner geek and using technology to help deal with the stresses of your connected life. I'm Renee, and your host for the show is Georgia. Before we begin, I just want to remind you that while Georgia is indeed a therapist, she's not your therapist. Everything said or implied in this episode is for informational and entertainment purposes only and shouldn't be taken in any way as a replacement for personal, professional care. Georgia, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Renee. How are you? You know, I'm, I'm a little bit irked. I have to say that the last show was kind of irksome for me because you taught me um, what negative thoughts were, how to write them down, and how to percentile them, so, but, but not how to fix them. So now I've got just this, this huge weight of negative thoughts that I've been collecting. Yeah, it was uh, unfortunately, well, or fortunately, just because it's such a large cop, uh, kind of, uh, so there's so much information that has to do with negative talk and consciousness that we split it into two. So it was a cliffhanger. Uh, it was like a season finale. And I have to tune in this week to find out what happened to our hapless hero and heroine. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, part two is today. Was it a rating stunt? You can tell me. No, we will do a quick recap, though. Okay, so. good. Yeah, today we um, are going to talk about what to do with any kind of negative uh, self-talk, unconscious kind of bullying that you may be doing to yourself. And it's relatively prevalent. Well, I would say it's almost pandemic based on the response that we got to last week's episode. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And it'll just kind of, it can it will slowly destroy you. It is one of those things that um, if our perception is reality, um, yeah, us thinking bad things about ourselves, not a good thing. It creates not a bad beneficial. world for ourselves. Yeah. So let's uh, do something and get rid of it. So what was, just for, the, for those people who didn't listen to last week's show, um, pause now and go listen to it. Um, but you'll give a quick yeah, summation. Yeah, and right? then do the homework. Yes. I'm going to give a quick little summation, but really it's better to listen to the actual podcast on it so that um, you're going to get the most out of it. And really, if you're starting and this is your first Zen and Tech, um, go back to the beginning and watch Zen and Tech 1 because they do kind of work um, foundationally. So one builds upon the other and it should help out. Yeah, actually, we get people who who write us and tweet us saying that they have gone back and listened to original episodes, and it's it's not a news show, so this stuff never gets stale. It's a it really is like a like a course, like a class, and you can you can go right. back to the very first day when you know Georgia introduced herself, everyone gave her apples, and we began. Yeah, I like the fact actually. Um, Sock from the chat room said that um, negativity isn't really a problem for him, and it it's not always negative in that. It's just negative talk. Perfectionism also can be relatively damaging in that you're constantly trying to do more because you think you're so wonderful and fabulous and nothing can stop you, nothing can hurt you and um, you end up burning out, causing a lot of stress and don't let yourself have a break. No one so can be optimal all the time. So, yeah, sometimes trying to push yourself harder is actually not good for the system in itself. Yeah. So give, give us this recap. What did we miss last week? Well, we went through different types of inner dialogues that you may have. So some of them might be um, like worrying, which causes anxiety and panic. And those are like what if statements. What if this happens? What if that happens? Um, the critic. If you're constantly critical about yourself, I suck. I did this stupid. How come I couldn't do this? Why am I so incompetent? Um, which leads to low self-esteem. Uh, the victim. Uh, why me, I can't do it, you don't understand, my circumstance is so horrible, leads to depression. Uh, perfectionist, you can do more, you can do better, uh, just a few more hours. This isn't exactly how I want it to be. Um, pretty much jump higher statements, do more, push yourself, which causes burnout, stress, and anxiety. And then there's people that just, um, you know, I don't want to fail, so a failure schema, what happens if I don't do this right? What happens if they notice that I'm not really good at this? Um, and that mean, leads to avoidance where you just won't try something or you decide to give up. 
um, and you don't participate in the first place. And all these things, like you said in a previous episode, they just serve to make our bubbles smaller. Well, in the end, they can push us to become less. Yeah. Uh, I think that it, it uh, goes back to that, um, you know, just we have to really be conscious of what we tell ourselves. And if we wouldn't say it to a friend, we shouldn't be saying it to ourselves. Yeah, you made that point really well last week. You know, if if you wouldn't say it to someone that you loved, if someone else was saying it to you or someone else was saying it to someone that you loved. And that was just an incredibly good way to perspective take from me because you sometimes you, you sometimes don't think about your and we discussed this in previous shows too. You don't think about yourself as being something of value or being a person or being you know worthy of space, I think is the way that you put it before. Yeah, I think that that's a really sad take in that we often, even if you are you have positive self-thoughts, but then you're going to push yourself a little harder and expect more from yourself than you would from someone else. And in the end, it's actually, we think that it will drive us to greatness. And in some cases it will. But if you don't learn when to stop, it will drive yourself to burnout yeah. and anxiety and stress. And a lot of people that I see are actually um, some of the most powerful, um, most um, commendable, fabulous people, but are running themselves at such a high rate that they're finding themselves with stress, anxiety, and putting way too much on their plate, which I kind of have um, a propensity for. So I have to watch out for myself. But you also um, made it clear that to- unlike the dark side, uh, once you go down the path of stress, it not necessarily will forever control your destiny. No, you can change it, but the first thing you have to notice is that, you know what, this is not really me being good to myself. Me saying that I can, you know, yeah, great, go, go, you can do more, you can you can take that extra job on, you can take this on. It's actually a little bit of self-hatred happening there. You're not actually putting your health first, and in the end, we can't get back our time and we yeah. can't get back our health. Yeah. We can make money here or there, fame, anything else, but if we don't have our health, there's nothing left. Yeah. We're the, we're the only us we have. And that sounds kind of cliched, but, um, you know, you, you take good care of your car, of your friend, of your phone, of your tablet, uh, of almost everything, yeah, and yet you are the only thing you're actually stuck with. Yeah, and, and why exactly, um, you know, why in the world would we do that to ourselves? Why would we, you know... Um, be so hard on ourselves in comparison to the way that we would treat anyone else. If we would treat anyone else and we should be putting ourselves first, and if you're not, that's a huge issue, what's happening there? So one of the questions we got were, are, are, is there some sort of common thread to this unconscious bullying? Are there archetypes that you could look for to see if you're doing it? Well, the archetypes would be the types of bullying that you have, which will usually fit in. It would be, um, you know, now that you take a look, you would track them. Are they mostly worry statements? What ifs? Are they mostly critiques? Are they mostly in victimy? Are they mostly perfectionistic? You can do more. Are they mostly kind of like a worry of failure or, you know, being mean yes. to yourself because you did fail? Um, that would be the first thing to do. And then you can kind of know what type of personality type you fit in. So myself, I would fit in, uh, you know, I hate failing, perfectionistic, mostly, and maybe a little bit critique. That's kind of where I would fit. And then you would take a look. Where does your, do your unconscious so Sorry, you can have more than fit? one, right? Yeah, they usually will. And some of the statements might fit into two as well. Okay. Um, but uh, the difference, say, between the critique is something that's, um, you know, saying that you suck pretty much. And the perfectionist would be saying, you can do more, you're great. Um, so one has a positive twist to it, but either way, it causes you to, um, you know, push yourself into areas where you shouldn't be dealing with. And then you take a look at where do they mostly go to? Is it mostly about work or school, relationships, social settings, family, performancing, um, how you look, or any specific situation? Because often there are certain parts where we feel more sensitive and these are kind of our weaknesses or our wounds or um, something that we don't feel comfortable in. Um, So, and is is this going to be incredibly unique to each individual or they're going to be, over time, have you you seen any kind of pattern to these? Well, in the end, it would be a personality type that would fit with, and we'll deal with personality types on a separate show, but um, certain personality types, say um, type A personalities, would be led towards perfectionistic, maybe critical, maybe fear of failure. 
um, that's kind of where it would be. So depending on your personality type, it will fit more with one and oh, or so, with the other. But I mean, other. like, do most, do most people worry about their work or do they worry about relationships? Do they worry about, you know, doing, like, is there, is there any commonality to what we're, we're, we're having the negative thoughts about? No, usually it's very, very pr- like personal and and okay. you know if you can't figure it out on your own it might be and if, if it really bothers you it might be something that you want to work through with someone um on a one-to-one basis okay so now that we have all this negative talk torture now that it's sitting on me like a thousand pound weight what do i do with it how do i shuck it off right well the first thing um you want to do is, you know, so you've taken a look at your negative thoughts. Um, you see where you fall. So you might be perfectionistic, critic there. Um, we're going to deal with how do you counter it. Um, and that's really the key. The key is not just having them and being, well, the first thing is becoming aware that you have them and what you say to yourself. Everyone says things to themselves. Often they're unconscious. Often we shove them under the rug because we don't like to even deal with it. Or we say, you know what, this actually, no, it's, a, it's true. I should be saying this to myself because I have to. I wouldn't say this to a friend, but for me, I have a different standard for myself. Um, Is that that almost like an evidentiary hearing? You're trying to determine the veracity of the negative statement you're making? I would say not even because often it's not truly true. You're so much harder on yourself. You put yourself to a different standard than you do to anyone else. So there's something more that's happening there. Um, But I think that it's because we worry that we're going to fail or we'll become complacent and we'll let ourselves down. And so we end up grounding and pounding ourselves. But in this case, there's no ref to start the fight. Um, So it becomes something really, really dangerous because you don't, if you don't even, if you're not even aware that you're doing it. So anyone that says, no, I don't actually, you know, engage in any type of um, unconscious thoughts about my own behaviors, like, okay, that's the first step, that there's something that's there that you're kind of hiding or you don't like to do it. So, you know, you'd have to think, when was the first time I felt this day? What situation triggered this? Um, And usually what happens is we've taken on someone else's bullying or being mean to us or saying that we're not good enough or that, you know, that 98 really should have been 100. And then, you know, in the ultimate Helsinki syndrome, we've from the victim now become the perpetrator and the victim is still ourselves okay. but we're doing it now to ourselves. and the worst part is we're actually going to pass this on to our kids so you really do have to be aware okay, so let me back this up you were bullying this. yourself and now you're taking the side of your own self-bully well no say that as a child you were um, made fun of because you had a unusually shaped nose okay and then after a while you might, the bully's gone, you've left elementary school, but these wounds don't just heal themselves. I remember every single horrible thing that anyone ever told me in elementary school. Yes, yes, I remember you. <laughs> and um, then you after we like take a it on ourselves, we, we look, <laughs> it's almost sweet. <laughs> um, then you look in the mirror and you're like, you know what, they're right, I really do have a horrible nose. And wow, look at my nose. And you become all sensitive about it. And you're like, oh, I don't like that picture. My nose really stood out. So you end up taking on the perpetrator is gone. And now we're the perpetrator yeah. and the victim as well. And that's where it becomes dangerous. All right. So um, how do you deal with it? Yeah, right? I'm still not there yet. No, no, for sure. I'm and still making fun of my nose right now. Thank you. <laughs> so the first thing that you would do is you'd say, well, what's the evidence? What are the pros and the cons, the truth to my statement? So say, I say, I'm a complete failure because I can't even make breakfast. So you go through that. Is it true? You know? And what's the evidence? And then... And if it's not what's... true, you failed at failing. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you okay. write it down. Um you know, what are the chances that, say, if it's like, you know, I'm going to completely fail at doing this project, what are the chances that it'll occur? So that might be also like, you know, someone that has a fear of airplanes, you know, that they think that it's going to fall and crash. Well, what are the chances for this? All right. So it, previously you had us write down every one of those negative thoughts. So now we have that negative thought line item and we're going to go through this list you're giving us now and test these line items. Right. And you can take a look at the show notes for it itself. We'll have it down so you don't have to um, write it down or worry about it right now. It'll be completely in the show notes. Zenatech.tv, you can find all the show notes. Right. And it would be, what would be the worst that could happen? Um, I like to always say, will you remember this from a year from now? If not, let it go. Yeah. 
And often and you won't remember it a day or a week from now. No, no, exactly. You'll remember, though, that horrible, angry feeling. And that's how powerful that effect is. Would I say this to a friend? And am I being overly difficult or negative to myself? Okay. So what is the evidence? Is this always true? What are the chances that this will occur? And what's the worst that could happen if it does occur? Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. And once you realize that you're doing it, which is, you know, step one, um, you know, and then you journal it out, you've written it down, that validates that you've done it. It calls out the bully. It takes um, this something that was unconscious and says, you know what, you can't keep on hating on me anymore. I'm not going to let you just do it. I'm going to say, hey, you over there, you know, I heard what you said, and now we're going to battle it out. You've shined a Which light on the really monster. Important. Yeah. But until, again, like in any single superhero comic book, once you take the mask off of the bad guy, they become less powerful. And that's exactly what we're doing now, is that we're calling out the bully and not letting them hide. Once they hide, they can do whatever they want to us with impunity. I this, knew you were Norman Osborn. You, you negative thought you. Right. Um, it calls it out. So then you journal it, you find out what kind you are, categorize it, and then you would write out just a positive counterstatement. And if you take nothing from this, just find what your negative thought is and then write your positive counterstatement Sorry, what's back. a positive counterstatement? Just, just to make sure I'm getting it right. It is, say that you say, you know what, I really suck, I can't even make breakfast. Well, you know, you said that to a friend, they would be like, you know what, actually, you know, at least you tried to make breakfast and you usually do a good job and I'm hungry and thank you so much for doing it. Okay. So it would be a positive way to say the negative. So you don't lie. You don't say, oh, yeah, you made a great breakfast even if you burnt everything. You find a way to put what the reality into a, into a good context. Yeah, you would say that this is um, what I would say to a friend. Okay. If a friend said, you know what, I burnt the toast, I suck, I'm a complete um, waste of flesh. <laughs> um, and your friend would be like, no, really, everyone burns toast now and then. That's normal. And yeah. that's okay. And that's what you would say to yourself. So you take your negative, flip it around, and then you say it to yourself. And if you've gone through the truth to the matter, yeah, people do burn toast sometimes. And life happens and sometimes you don't do well at it. But at least you're not giving up. Yeah. At least you tried to make toast. I mean, a bunch of lazy people didn't even try to make their friends toast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be negative about others, not yourself. That's what I'm learning. Right. <laughs> right. And so that's what you would do to counter your negative self-talk. So the homework is just to write your positive counter statements, really. Um, you know, you can go through the full schema of where they are. You can go through how true they are. But in the end, um, if you're going to take it in a nutshell, the cliff notes to this, you just learn about them, call them out, and then every time you say something horrible, say, you know, if my friend said this to me, what would I say to them? So it's almost and two different there's almost two different exercises we're going through here. There is recording the negative thoughts. And then there's categorizing them, which you're going to use later for the personality types. Uh, but once you have the negative thoughts written down, aside from categorizing them, we're also going to write a positive statement to kind of neutralize them or, or negate the negative. Um, right. If, if you're someone that really likes to find out your own personality type and everything about you, you're going to go through all of the steps. You're going to categorize the thoughts. You're going to go through how valid the thoughts actually are. And then after that, you're going to... Um, you know, go through it and write positive counter statements. If you're someone that really just wants to deal with something quick and easy and you don't really care if you're a type of a perfectionist, you're a type of that, you'll kind of know it if you've listened to uh, Zen and Tech 16 on, um, you know, unconscious ways that we talk to ourselves. Yeah. If not, just think out your positive counter statements and you have to say them to yourself because if you've been saying these to yourself since you were a child, that's a lot of reinforcement for a really long time. And that feeling of, like, the first thing that people will say to me, why they don't get rid of them, is that, you know, I worry that if I don't do this to myself, I'm not going to achieve or I'm not going to do as much as I could do or I'm not going to work really hard. 
like people often tell me, but I'm a perfectionist. This is good. It's good for me to say, get higher, do more. Um, you know, it's, it's actually a good thing. I don't want to get rid of that. It's like they're and, driving yeah, themselves. It's good up to 80%. You do it to 100% and that leads to burnout. My mom used to always tell me I'm like, um, I'm a 60 watt bulb that thinks it's an 121 watt bulb. And in the end, it's, that's exactly what happens, you know. Now, but so I was going to ask you, because that may, why do we have these, these negative thoughts? I mean, they don't sound like they help us very much. Why, or, or does it not even matter why we have them? Well, it definitely does matter if you really want to get into it. It's important to figure out why you do it. Um, you would say, you know, who, who is this voice coming from? Like, where did it stem from? Um, and it, you'll probably know someone in your past that they come from, that we've taken them on. And I think that a lot we feel that if we don't beat ourselves up, we're not going to get up. I think that we think of, that we have to kick ourselves in order to move. Yeah. But we really don't. And they can plague us. They can perseverate and make us just incapacitated or drive us to burn out. Either way, not that good. So, I mean, you're talking about the difference between a gentle push in the right direction as opposed to a punch in the jaw or a kick into somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, you have to make sure even, even in the UFC, there's a ref to call off the fight when it becomes too much. So you have to be your own ref. Robot Girl in the chat room is asking, what happens if you meet the person whose voice you've been bullying yourself with over the years? Do you get angry at them? Do you run away? Do you fight or flight? Do that's, you bamf um, or snicked? I think that that's a very interesting question. Actually, I don't think that it's necessary for us to have to see the person that might have um, said horrible things to us and confront them in order to heal. In the end, the healing happens within ourselves, not really needed from then. I know it sounds really therapy-ish to say that, but I honestly believe it because odds are if it is, say, a family member or parent that's just um, ignorant or mean or cruel, they're probably still ignorant, mean or cruel, and they're not going to give you what you need. If it is just in the confrontation that you feel better with, just to be able to say, to stand up to them and say, I didn't like that, and it doesn't matter what they reply, then okay. But I think that in the end, what we have to say is that, you know, their words don't really matter. They're just words. And I believe in myself. And I don't have to continue perpetrating their crime that they started in me. If they really sucked, then um, you shouldn't continue it. Uh, and another question, how do you find the positive counterstatements? I mean, if you're, if you're struggling with it or if it's not immediately apparent to you, is there a way to figure out how to counteract that negative statement? Well, I always say, what would your friend say? If you don't even know, ask your friend. You know, say, wow, I really feel horrible. I did X. And see what they would say if you have a good friend. Now, don't, don't find this to be the bully. Okay. They're like, yeah, you're right. You really did suck. That was horrible. <laughs> um, and... Usually, whenever I say something negative, it would just be, how would I give myself a buy? You know, what it would be so be. Um, yeah, because it is really, really important the way that we look at ourselves. Um, and it's important also that we teach others how to treat us and how to talk to us as well. So by saying when someone says something really horrible, you know what, that's not cool, that's not okay. Um, that really feels good. Um, Nicholas from the chat room says, well, what happens if it's a best friend? If they're still doing it, you might want to say, hey, whoa, you know, I don't accept that. Don't feed that monster for sure. Uh, let them know. Say it. You know, that's not okay to say that to me. If you can't change if the people around that you, said change something. the people around you. Right, right. If they're really, really horrible, find better friends. Um, you know, keep concrete boundaries of where you feel comfortable and where you don't feel comfortable. And you can just say, you know what, I don't like when you speak about X. It really does make me feel bad. And if they're good friends, they'll deal with it. If they're not, then you need to um, find better friends for sure. All right. Another quote. What do you do once you have these counter statements? So you've written them in your journal, but, but then what? Then, after a while, you'll notice that you have certain patterns. There's certain things that you always say to yourself. There's certain ways that you're really hard on yourself. Um, and you have to actually find the good within them and re-say them to yourself. So when you say, you know what, I really suck, I get lost in traffic, I always like to say, well, you know, it is just one I always get lost everywhere. And my life is like a Seinfeld episode. This will be a great story later. 
Yeah. I'll use this on the next Zen attack. That's what I say. Hey, at least I'm adventurous enough to be out there. You know, some people wouldn't even try. At least I'm out. Th- that's one thing you've mentioned many, many times is it's not, it's not the failure. It's the, it's the getting back up and trying again. It is the learning resilience, which is that, you know, um, yeah, well, the world will knock you down. Sometimes you will be horrible to yourself, but that's okay. I'll go back in nice. and hopefully learn from it. All right. So you, you have your positive counter statements. You have your homework. Georgia, where can people um, find out more about you? You can find me on the website, www.zenandtech.tv, and also on Twitter at Georgia Tippy. Nice. And you can find me at Renee Ritchie. You can find all of us at Zen and Tech. We are here every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern or thereabouts. Um, you can also find us at zenandtech.tv. You can send us an email at podcast at zenandtech.tv. Dot TV, or leave a comment when the show goes up on the site. Um, I would like to remind everyone that we have a vast uh, network of shows. You can find all of them at mobilenations.com slash shows, including Super Functional, which is the physical to this emotional model. You can also find Iterate, iPhone Live, iPad Live, Android Central, Crackberry, uh, everything uh, that any good geek needs to hear during the week. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to Zen and Tech on iTunes. Please leave a rating. It helps iTunes to feature us, which means more people can find us and we get to hang out with more awesome people on the chat room uh, like we are doing tonight. Uh, that is just the, the best thing about doing these shows. Um, Georgia, thank you very much for another great episode. I feel sort of like the season premiere. I have gotten past my cliffhanger ending and I now have a clear, a clear goal for the season to come. Well, good. I'm really happy. I, I enjoy it. So hopefully, um, yeah, you take this to heart. It's not an easy thing to do, especially if you are more pessimistic than optimistic, but it is something important. And even if you choose one, just one negative thought that is reoccurring and you work on flipping it, it will definitely make your feelings of self-worth, stress, and anxiety get better. Well, you know, Georgia, if self-realization and actualization were easy, there wouldn't be so many a-holes in the real world. Exactly. (laughs) That's what I like to think. All right, guys, have a great week. We will see you here next. The week that is next, that is. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Uh, Zen and Tech was brought to you tonight by the Crackberry.com store, your one-stop shop for everything BlackBerry, including the playbook, for cases, chargers, cables, headsets, and much, much more. Point your browser immediately to shopcrackberry.com. Be there.